YouTube, Rick Wilson here. Time for this year's tag, camper, little guy camper, uh, hacks and tips. Today I'm gonna install solar power. Got the solar panels over here. Got all my stuff laid out. So I'm gonna show you how to install these on this camper. The unique thing about these, let me get one, they're flexible. They bend, so I can mount it on this curvy trailer. And uh, I don't have my teeth in, it's my day off, okay? But we're friends, so it's okay. And uh, I want to be comfy when I do this today. And uh, I got a little coffee maker thing. I'm going to show you how to make coffee with your tag with cake cups when you don't need electricity. I got a way of doing that now, too. Um, anyway, let's get started. I mean, let me take the camera off the tripod and we'll do a little walk around here. Okay, right here is the panels. And these are made by a company called Renology. And uh, the unique thing about these panels, I don't know if you can see it on here, is the collectors. It's been getting close. The collectors are little raised bumps. And what that does is uh, if the sun's not hitting it at a direct angle, it's coming in at an at a off angle, the raised bump still collects the sunlight just like it was hitting it head on. So that's one unique thing. And that'll come in handy with a curve since it's going to be curved when it goes on. And then I've got everything we need here to, to install it. Now you need a, a regulator because these things under full sun right now, well, here I'll show you. I've got a voltmeter here. So you got one of these regulators here that you connect all your wires into and this thing monitors the voltage coming out of the panel and it keeps it at about 14 volts and it monitors the battery too and it detects that the battery is completely charged it'll disconnect these panels from your battery and if the sun goes down and the voltage on these panels drop below 12 volts where you're actually draining your battery it'll disconnect these from the battery also so you really have to have one of these um, and this is the first thing we're going to mount is the regulator and i went to looking at the trailer about where to mount the regulator now the trailer comes with a plug here to put solar the tag trailers do but you can't use it it's a special plug that you got to order their solar panels which sits on the ground and it's a special plug they won't sell you the plug um, so we're just going to have to remove this and tag tag needs to get with it and change that to something that's universal that that you know because why why do we have to use see it's, it's zamp powered solar you got to use their solar and uh, i'm not going to do that i like these renology they don't have to sit on the ground we're going to mount them right onto the camper so the first thing we're going to do is remove this got to have a special driver it's got a little square thing so i got a square driver here so we're going to remove this and then i'm going to mount this box right here my first impression was to mount it here but this diamond plate the last time i drilled through diamond plate i broke three titanium drill bits and it's, it's hard you got to drill four holes i'll go through a dozen drill bits trying to drill holes in that so i decided there's a nice flat spot here on this on this storage unit and this is where the battery and the wiring for the solar is right there so i'm just going to mount it right above that i'm going to remove this the wires will come out and run right into this thing and the nice thing is, is i'll use these same screws i don't even have to drill these are self-tapping screws that they use on this container so i'm going to use these screws because i'm going to remove this okay now i've removed the self-tapping screws that hold this in this funky plug that you can't really use and you've got the wiring harness right here now before you actually get into the wiring here and start cutting on it you might want to shut your main thing off here that cuts the battery off to everything and you can turn a light on inside the camper make sure you got it right make sure it's off and um, so now we're going to actually cut into this harness okay that went just fine the self-tapping screws went right into the fiberglass this thing's really tight it ain't going anywhere it don't even look bad with the missing plug i wrapped some tape around it so it don't get frayed going that moving any movement in that hole um, 
all you got here is your negative and your positive that runs to the battery. This is what was to the back of the plug that I removed. And one thing I will point out, see the lights are on? Even though I got that switch disconnected in there, this uh, plug is connected directly to the battery. So you might want to be aware of that. <laughs> uh, luckily I didn't, you know, shock myself or anything when I cut the wires. Um, and then your other two connectors that run to your solar panels go here. You got a negative and a positive with it too. And they take a special connector. Let me show you. This is what you use with all the this is what you use with all the solar, the special connector. Don't pay any attention to that red. That doesn't mean it's positive, okay? It just means it's the male part of the plug. I figured that out too. You gotta really be careful which is the negative and positive when you connect these up. I use my meter and check. Um, the socket coming out of the solar panel itself is positive. The male end of it coming out of the solar panel is negative. And uh, so you have to kind of watch how you hook those up. Okay, next we're gonna actually mount the solar panels. And we're gonna put the solar panels here and here. These solar panels are 100 watts each, so that'll give 200 watts at 12 volts. That's about 12, 14 amps that'll be fed into the battery to recharge it all day long. That's a pretty good charge. I shouldn't need the generator anymore with these solar panels. Okay, now they make these solar panels in different sizes. This is the 100 watt, but I got two of them. There was a 150 watt and a 200 watt. The problem with the bigger ones is there wasn't room here. Um, it comes, I, Cause I measured this before I ordered them. Okay. And, and uh, look how these are gonna lay on it. Just like that. Don't they look nice? They take a look nice on there. They get, I wanted two up to keep it symmetrical, so it looks nice. But it also doubles it. I got 100 watts, 100 watts. That gives me 200 watts. That should be plenty enough to charge that battery up all day. And uh, and we won't need to take. I'm not even going to take the generator on this trip, so uh, I'm going to glue these on now. And this is on the back. Before I actually mount it, I thought I'd let you see all the specifications. Right there they are if you want to look at them. I think you'd be able to read that. I can see it on my monitor, so I'm sure you can see it. And uh, now we're going to apply it uh, silicone adhesive to the backs of these. I got a uh, Power Grab Ultimate Silicone Construction Adhesive which is what the manufacturer recommends. Okay. It's hot out here in North Carolina today. Anyway, one, one tube was enough. So now we're going to put it on the trailer. Right about where I want this because I really only get one shot if I don't want glue all over my trailer. Let's see. Back here. I was worried about how to get this down against the trailer and hold it until it dries, but this panel is so flexible it just lays right onto the curb by itself. I thought this would be a good place for it. You can get the direct side and then when the sun's going toward evening, it'll be direct on this. And these are bigger than what I need, so it should work fine. Don't go sparingly on the adhesive, okay? Because there's gonna be times you're doing 70 mile an hour down the highway. You gotta keep this on, okay? Now I'm gonna do a repeat with the other side. I'm not gonna film that. You see how to do this side. Just do the other side the same. Okay, I got them both on. I got them temporarily connected. I got all the wires. I'm gonna have to roll all this up and get a quick storage in here. But we'll get it all put out of sight here shortly. And I'm gonna go around this edge and put a little bead to seal so no air can get under it. We'll do that yet. But I did check to see it was working. You go inside there. 
reading 14.1 volts. I ain't never seen it read that good. And uh, let me turn a few things on. Okay, I turned the refrigerator on and the refrigerator is actually like 80 degrees inside, so it's running full blast right now. And I turned the exhaust fan on high and uh, still getting 13. Point seven. Okay, now that I got all installed, I did what any man would do. Once I install the thing, I go read the manual. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to see what these lights mean, and it's fine. The flashing light here means it is charging. The solid green light here means the battery is a little under voltage, which it would be because it's been sitting all winter. So now it's being charged up. I used to have to plug it in the wall. Now I can just let it sit out here and it'll be charged all the time. And uh, so it's all working just fine. I still got to get a couple little wire ties that can stick to the camper. I don't want to drill any holes, uh, but I'll get a few of them just to hold them wires down better. Okay, now I did go around and caulk the edge with caulk so that no air can get under it. And then I looked up some YouTube videos on how other people had mounted this thing. One guy mounted his with a super tape, a duct tape that I, I went and bought a roll here. It, it's like 600 pounds. You can't tear it. You have to cut it with shears. It's a really tough tape with a super aggressive adhesive on it. And he put his on with that alone. And he was doing the one year checkup and they were still on, just held with tape. I couldn't believe it. So I thought, well, that's, I'll, I'll put the super tape around the edge and it's black so it matches the trim. That's what was nice about the super tape. It's been three hours since I hooked it up. It's now slow blinking. It's the TV and the battery, which means the battery is now charged. It's been sitting all winter. It took it three hours to charge it back up. And now it's, uh, when it's, when both lights are blinking, it's doing something called a float charge, where it's just maintaining your battery voltage. And uh, I can just let it sit out here forever like this. And it'll be ready anytime I need it. And, uh, okay, this here is Kitchen Gadget, the gizmo. Uh, this is the Keurig coffee maker. It's the world's smallest coffee maker we found that I put in last year's video. And, uh, but when you're in a campground that don't have electric and you're running off your battery, you can't run the Keurig coffee maker. And I really like my Keurig coffee. I hate to go without it. it we had the cowboy coffee pot, you know, with the grounds, and but the, when you're camping, you got the grounds and the, it's a mess. It's, uh, anyway, so I got this kitchen gizmo. Makes K-cups without electric. Uh, you just heat your water on the gas with a tea kettle. And then once your water's hot, once your kettle whistles, you turn it off. Pop your cake up right in the top here, right there, like that. And then you put this on. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take the cake up out because you're gonna puncture it here and you're gonna puncture it in the bottom. And I'm not gonna make a cup of coffee right now, so I'm gonna not. But you just put that on there, like that. And then you pour your cup of hot water out of your kettle. Dump your water right in the top right here. And then you got a plunger. And you just, you just very slowly push this down because you don't want to force that water through there too fast. You want your coffee to have some flavor. But it, you know, about a minute, it takes about a minute, to, same as your curry. Push that, push that down. And, and it's going to be making coffee down here with the hot water you made in the tea kettle. And then when you're done, you just pull that off, pull your cake up out, throw it away, no mess. This thing's great and a lot of you i just mentioned this on last year's video that i had found this and you guys are like oh it's not it's a french press that's a french press no it's not it's a gizmo right there this so right there kitchen gizmo there i was right so, so anyway that's just your thing and one last look at the finished trailer with the solar panels it looks pretty nice and I want to talk about the new season coming up. I only got about three more weeks of videos and I'll be out of videos. So we're taking a whole month off and we're heading out west again. We're going to go through Colorado. We're going to go to that new hot springs again. There's a couple things I didn't film last time. I got an entire nude farm there. We're going to film that. And the power plant that runs the entire facility that makes electricity off of the hot water from the hot springs. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, then we're going to shoot over to Silverton and go to the Animus Ghost Town. And then we're going to go down into the Four Corners area and visit a couple of national parks and do a couple of really neat drives. And then we're gonna head north toward Montana and uh, we're gonna go to Craters of the Moon, which is a place where Yellowstone used to be. Uh, 
you know, a million years ago. It, it, there, there's other calderas other than the one it's in. It has, it has slowly moved to the east across the United States over the millions of years. So we're going to visit one of the former Yellowstone sites, and then we're going to actually uh, go on up to Yellowstone. I got to go in and look. I got to go pick up Forest Finn's gold. We had a problem last year, and I waited to the last day, and then we had we didn't get out on time, and I couldn't even go look for it. So. Uh, I still think it's where I think it is, and we're going to go back. I'm going to go for the gold the first day this time instead of the last day. Uh, that way, if something goes wrong, we'll have another day or two to, to go get it. But I'm definitely going to go pick up that gold this time. And, um, and then we're going to head on north into Montana. And uh, I've never been to Montana. There's some neat stuff up there. We're going to go to the Bannock Ghost Town, uh, the Prairie Dog State Park. There's some neat things up there. And then we're going to go across to Mount Rushmore look some things around in that area and then we're going to head uh, on toward Ohio back east again. We're going to stop and see Lincoln's log cabin that he was born and grew up in and we're going to stop at uh, in Ohio at Hocking Hills State Park which is actually five different parks. That's where I'm from originally. I know these parks really well so I'm going to do some great videos there and show you some neat places there. Uh, and lots of other things along the way. I mean, we're going to be gone an entire month. Uh, but you got about three or four more weeks, and then we're going to be gone. And uh, I'll be off to, you know, no, no new videos for about six weeks while we're gone. But then I'll be back with a whole new season. So uh, we'll see you all later.